Hi there, this is Janet Simmons, and welcome to the first video in Module 2 of UOIT's AEDT Assessment for Adult Learning in a Digital Context. In this video, we will review what it means to learn and what it means to teach. Learning and teaching both play a significant role in assessment, so it's important for us to view each from an assessment perspective. We will begin with the analysis questions and then briefly examine what it means to learn and what it means to teach. We will then conclude with the synthesis questions. There are two analysis questions for this video. What are some expectations learners may have about assessment? How are these expectations different or similar to the expectations teachers may have of assessment? What exactly is learning? Do the items on this list correspond with your assumptions about learning? In other words, what does it mean to learn? Looking at the current definition of learning, we are drawn to the second meaning, which is skills and knowledge acquisitions. We could also argue that this is not the full description because it's one thing to acquire skills and knowledge and another thing to apply the skills and knowledge. Looking at the third definition, we see that learning may change behavior. Behavior modification is often a byproduct of actual learning. So, as we acquire skills, knowledge, we meld these with our previous experiences, skills, and knowledge, and then we adjust our behavior. Can you answer the two questions on the screen? Do you perhaps use only assessment to gauge whether or not you've learned a topic? If you're having difficulty with the first question, then answering the second may be even more difficult. If students can truly answer that question, then how do teachers know if a student truly knows the topic? These are questions we will continually return to during this course. I'm sure most of you have heard of learning styles, but how many of you actually know that this is a myth? People tend to learn in different ways, and according to researchers, we use a variety of styles to learn. It's wrong to say, oh, I'm a visual learner, or oh, I'm an auditory learner. In fact, researchers have identified many different ways of learning. Yale University has compiled a list of about 30 ways people learn. And if you go to the website, you'll notice that Yale has found over 70 ways people learn. I'll leave you to dig further into the learning styles myth, but please remember it's been discredited for many, many years. So if you don't learn with learning styles, how do you learn? There are several frameworks that examine how we learn, but the one I think addresses the needs of online learners is this framework. Notice that the four areas are not concerned with the style, but of four centers of learning. One of course is assessment, but all three must be present to work together to provide a solid foundation for people to learn a new skill or acquire new knowledge. Next, we need to consider exactly what is teaching. The answer may seem obvious since you have experience with teachers over many years. Traditionally, teaching is described as a process of transmitting information via lectures. Students often take copious amounts of notes and are expected to successfully memorize information to pass exams. Your assumptions about teaching may include some of the items on this list, but for the purpose of this course, teaching is viewed as a process, whereby the instructor facilitates the learning process by organizing the learning experiences alongside the students. The teacher is not the sole holder of the knowledge, nor does the instructor magically transmit knowledge to blank slates. This notion of teaching is based on a particular perspective of learning. Today, we are much more learner-centered, and here in the AEDT program, we strongly believe that problem-based learning provides a solid foundation for good teaching practices. The AEDT program in particular uses five facilitation modes to assist learners with achieving their academic goals. 
these are not how teachers previously approach teaching, and it sometimes is an adjustment for both teachers and learners to adapt to these new ways of teaching and learning. Educational theory is the foundation of learning and teaching. You are likely familiar with some of these theories, but if not, I suggest you gain some rudimentary knowledge of each. Wikipedia has good descriptions of each. These theories are important because they help guide how we create assessment tools and our overall philosophy about assessment, both for teaching and learning. I believe that Tony Bates sums up teaching and learning with this statement. Having a variety of tools or ways of teaching is the hallmark of a good facilitator. Additionally, there is little point in arguing about the correct teaching approach because the most important is that the student actually learn. In the AEDT program, that happens mostly through PBLs, which moves the responsibility from teachers teaching to learners discovering. There are three synthesis questions for this video. These will form the basis of the tutorial discussion this week, so please be ready to share your insights and opinions. There are many resources available on the internet where you can find out more about best practices of teaching and also learning how to learn. The deeper your knowledge of teaching and learning are, the easier it will be for you to see assessment from multiple points of view. I encourage you to explore areas of teaching and learning that haven't yet been examined and bring your ideas and questions to the tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.